Welcome to another edition of Conversations with CBS Sports, where we sit down with some of the greatest names in sports, as well as some of the heaviest hitters in Hollywood. I'm your host, James Brown, and today we are here with Joe Torrey. Not every elite level player, Joe, has transitioned nicely to be a successful manager, coach, if you will. You did. What did you take from your experience? And also as a player manager, I'm thinking there are not many who did that. Well, I think about Bill Russell in basketball. Didn't right. So what did you take to that next level? Well, I, I think it was all about my experiences. And, and you know, like when I took this job, when the commissioner offer, offered me this position, I said I have to make sure I don't forget what it was like to be a player. I don't forget what it was like to be a manager. Because these are the decisions you're going to make involving the game of baseball. And I think as, as long as you try to be fair, uh, even if you have to make decisions that aren't popular, uh, I think the, the decision is going to be respected. Even though you don't agree with me, I just want you to respect the fact that somebody has to make those decisions. And that's, that's basically what I, I, I used to tell my players. I don't ask you to, to agree with me. I just ask you to understand that somebody is responsible for making decisions. And, and that's, that's where we go. Hey, Joe, let me hit you in rapid-fire succession with some of these questions, being mindful of your time. You mentioned your job in Major League Baseball now. Talk about what it is. Are you executive vice president of baseball operations? What does that mean, and will you be able to still bring all that you've shown as a player and a manager to your job? Uh, I, I hope so. I think probably I've spent the most time uh, this first year of mine with umpires. You know, that's the team I root for. Umpires are my focus because as a manager, yes. uh, James, I, I wanted, I felt that there was something that needed to change. And it's the relationship. And I'm still in the process of doing that. I, you know, I think umpires, I know umpires feel that players don't think they care. Okay. And managers get aggravated also. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, uh, my goal is to, before next season, is to have them understand how each other tick. And I, you know, how I'm going to do that at this point in time is unclear, but uh, that is my goal, and, and they've all been, uh, you know, apprised of that. Replay may factor into that. What's your attitude about replay as it relates to umps as well, too? Well, you know what? I sit home, and, and I watch, and I say, yeah, I wish we could have gotten that right. Uh, we, you know, I wish we did that differently. But, you know, when you, when, you, when you think about replay, it's not as easy as it sounds. I mean, you know, you see a play at the plate, a tag is made, you know, he may be on the plate. But, it, you know, first of all, you don't want the game to be slowed down or a walk because baseball is about a tempo. I mean, you don't, it's not like football where you have four downs one way, four downs the other way, and you get, you know, commercial stops during the series and stuff like that. This game has got a rhythm to it that you really don't want to disrupt. What we have in replay right now involving home runs and, and you know, fair and foul home runs, it works. It works. We start thinking about fair or foul on the lines, which could come, you know, as early as next year. Uh, you're dealing with, uh, suppose the ball is called foul, everybody stops running and the replay shows it's fair. Now, what do we place the runners? You know, there are a lot of decisions to make and, uh, you know, and I don't want umpires to think that if we always call it fair, then we've, we've done the safe thing. I don't want them to do the safe thing. I want them to do what, what they see. And, and so there, there's a lot to talk about and a lot, a lot to learn about once we make that decision. We want to make sure that, uh, that we feel good about it because you can't put the genie back in the bottle once you, once you get it out there. A lot of us old dinosaurs are being dragged into this new arena that we're in now. Social media. Mm. Is that, and I hear your gut reaction, mm. is that influencing your job? Do you think about that at all in terms of how you do your job? It's concerning. You know, we, we've had some discipline uh, on, on, um, on uh, managers and, and for, because we have rules. You're not allowed to do it during a game. Um, because, they, you know, a lot of guys, and they, they do it very honestly in, in trying to share their thoughts. But in doing that, you may be telling people who's available and who isn't available. And you're, you know, you're going to wind up, you know, starting to infringe on the integrity of the game. And that's really, you know, important to me. The integrity of this game is so important. The social media is scary to me. Uh, first off, 
I, I think it gives a lot of courage to people who don't have to face people. And, and that's, an, that's an issue for me, you know. To me, I, I always felt, as much as I hate confrontation, if there's something I have to say, I have to look somebody in the eye and tell them, uh, you know, how I feel and, and what I think is going to happen. Uh, but if you, if you do it without having to look somebody in the eye, I, um, I think it's dangerous. So you've also indicated that alcohol in the dugout coming on the heels of all that took place in, in Boston is something that's of concern to you as well, especially as it relates to baseball players and everybody associated with the game being role models. Just give me a quick snippet on that, please. Well, the, the quick snippet is I probably talked out of line when I started saying, yeah, you know, we're going to tell this one what to do. We can't. Each club has the right to make the decisions for their team. Now, does that say I'm not concerned about what went on in Boston? I'm not curious about it? Uh, you're darn right, but we're curious. And we are role models. You know, whether we want to be or, or we don't want to be, these kids look up to us, and, and we have to, you know, you know make sure that we're, we're sending the right message. So, you know, I, I, I can't say that, you know, if you eliminate beer out of the clubhouse, that that's going to be the answer. I think people have to understand what our goal is and, you know, and have ball clubs make decisions accordingly. Sparky Anderson and John Wood, obviously some kind of influence or impact on you. Sparky, when I was a young manager, you know, in my 30s and, and 40s, Sparky would always come over after a spring training game. He says, Joe, I just want to tell you that, you know, this, this may help you or that may. The way he presented it, it you know, it, it was like you wanted to embrace him, which you usually did. Uh, of course, he always got your ear by saying, come here, I'll show you how to hit a wedge shot. You know, it was, <laughs> he was over there in spring training, always hitting wedge shots. John Wooden about knocked me off my chair. I, I was managing the Yankees. We're in Anaheim. He walks into my office. And the you didn't reason, know he was coming? I didn't know he was coming. He walks into my office, sits down, and proceeds to tell me how much he likes the way my team plays. And I said, wow. John Wooden. And all that told me uh, was that my players play hard and they play with respect. Uh, I mean, I love watching old footage of him and Bill Walton going at it and, uh, and talking about the long hair and... You know, sure, you, you don't have to cut your long hair, but you're not going to play basketball for he me. He says, we're going to miss you, Bill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sure it's, did. It's, it's, and right to the end, um, he was a very special friend. And I, luck, I was fortunate enough to, to go and have a brunch with him uh, just a little less than a year before he passed on. Uh, we got there at like 10 in the morning and, and stayed till like 3 in the afternoon. And... He was remarkable. Uh, to, uh, Mike Sosha was there, and you know Bill Sharman, who was I was I was a Boston Celtics fan. In fact, I really got my idea of team play from watching the Celtics play in the '50s with those guys, how they shared the ball all the time, and uh, it, it was it was quite a uh, you know Bill Russell of course when I met him and I told him that story and. Uh, you know, I, I think he was a little surprised, but, uh, you know, I, I just love the fact that nobody is bigger than the other guy. Joe Torrey, thank you for your time. This has been a real treat for me, face-to-face, -face, finally. JB, same here.